We're at the Muse Wildlife Management Area, and this is the site that we've chosen to evaluate the feasibility and the success of a translocation of wild-caught Texas horned lizards. We'll go ahead and grab the next one here. We're looking at reintroducing Texas horned lizards onto areas where they once existed, but now they're gone. And we've had a lot of interest over the years in reintroducing lizards to properties, and we've never really looked at the feasibility of even doing that. Will they survive? Where do they go? What will happen? So we're trying to just see if it's possible. Okay, let's get the weight on this lizard. 64. These horned lizards were collected from roadsides on private properties uh, southwest of San Angelo. Okay, good. Several private ranches donated and want to be a part of this project. The lizards go into that predator-proof enclosure so they can acclimate first. We call that a soft release. We've done quite a bit of brush work out here to make the habitat more suitable for lizards, but they need a, a somewhat sandy type soils. They need a good supply of harvester ants. That's the primary diet of horned lizards. They were evaluated and then we brought them on site and we put what we call a pit tag inside each lizard to help identify that animal. 735 AFF3, okay good. We then affixed them with a VHF radio transmitter to track them to get daily locations on each lizard. The frequency for this transmitter is gonna be 150.631. Okay, I think that's her right there. This is Tester's model paint. We paint them with a little bit of model paint and that just helps them to blend into the natural environment here. They're actually glued onto the back uh, using a, a non-toxic eyelash glue that's used in the cosmetic industry. And then we use a collar, which is simply uh, tubing with a fishing line run through it. So far, it's working excellent. All right. And they spend about 10 days in that enclosure. At this point, we let them disperse on their own and we begin our daily tracking. Every day we get these locations and, and the first thing we were interested in is dispersal away from the enclosure site or simply how far are they moving out. She hasn't moved very far lately. Great. Okay, we're getting closer. Yep, there she is. Go ahead and get her GPS location. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got that? Yes, sir. Later in the day, I come in and I plug that into the computer, and we can already start uh, looking at habitat use. These horned lizards use lots of different types of habitat. We have had some predation. It's always sad to lose another horned lizard, but it's a learning opportunity for us to see what's harmful to them. And as we learn more about what's killing these lizards, we'll try to, to avoid that in future releases. We know lizards were here at one time. There she is. Everybody grew up with them, so it's kind of an iconic animal they grew up with, and now they're not there. People you know, really want to know why we can't bring them back. 25 point. There have been very few research studies dealing with Texas horned lizards, learning about their habitat use, and really what they need in the wild. Horn lizard habitat is good quail habitat, and it's good turkey habitat, and generally good deer habitat. So it's another way to educate people on the importance of just good habitat management. Yes, Probably will be several years down the road before we really know what's going to happen here, but we're very optimistic. We've actually seen weekly increases in body weight for both males and females. It's an indicator to us that they're finding enough to eat, so that's very important for us. We'd like to really restore these lizards back to much of the state where they're gone. That's kind of our ultimate goal. 